Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video on gradient. In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the gradient of a line. And we're going to focus this video on students who may be studying for AS Maths or Level 2 Fever Maths. So here we've got two points that are joined by a straight line. We've got the point x1, y1, and the point x2, y2. And if I ask my students, my younger students, how to work out the gradient of this line, they would sketch this right angle triangle. They would work out the rise by taking the height of this point away from the height of this point. They work out the rise. They would work out the run. They would take away this x coordinate away from this x coordinate to work out the run. And they would do the rise divided by the run, and that would work out the gradient. Now, for AS maths or level 2 forever maths, it can be useful to use a formula, a more formal version of this formula. So instead of writing rise divided by run, we would do, well, it's going to be y2 minus y1 for the rise, and the run would be x2 take away x1. So that would give us the gradient m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And this formula is quite useful. It's quite useful whenever you are given the gradient and you maybe were trying to work out a missing x coordinate or y coordinate. So here's the formula, what m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that can be used to work out the gradient of a line. So let's have a look at some questions now and we're gonna use this formula to work it out. So our first question. Okay, so our first question says, work out the gradient of the line joining the points 2, 13 and 7, 3. So the first thing I do whenever I've given, been given a question like this is to label the points x1, y1 and x2, y2. If I had labeled this point x2, y2 and this point x1, y1, I would still get the same answer. So don't worry too much about which way around you're labeling the points. So m equals y2, well that's equal to 3, subtract y1, that's 13, divided by x2, that's 7, subtract x1, that's equal to 2. So we have 3, subtract 13, divided by 7, subtract 2. Well, 3, subtract 13, that's negative 10, over, and 7, subtract 2 is equal to 5. Minus 10 divided by 5, well, it's going to give us negative 2. So the gradient of the line joining these points would be negative 2. Okay, let's have a look at our next question now. So our next question says, work out the gradient of the line joining the points minus two, minus three, and six, three. So this question is just a little bit different where we've included some negative signs in the coordinates. So we'll call this point x1, y1, and this point x2, y2. So y, um, m equals y2, so y2 is equal to three, subtract y1, that's negative three, so minus, minus three over x2, that's 6, subtract x1, that's going to be minus 2. So we've got 3 minus minus 3, that's 6, and we've got 6 minus minus 2, that's 8. So the gradient of this line would be equal to 6 eighths, but that can be simplified to 3 quarters. So the gradient of this line would be 3 quarters. That's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question now. So this question, we've now got a bit of algebra involved in it. So we've got work out the gradient of the line joining the points 2a minus 7a and 4a, 0. So again, let's label the points x1, y1, x2, y2. And so m equals y2, that's 0, subtract y1, that's negative 7a. And then we've got our x2, which is 4a, subtract our x1, which is equal to 2a. So that would give us 0 minus minus 7a, well that's going to be 0 plus 7a, so that's going to be 7a, over 4a take away 2a, well that's going to be equal to 2a. Now the a's would cancel here, so they would cancel because we're dividing, so we've got 7 over 2. So the gradient of the line would be equal to 7 over 2, or 3.5. And that's it. Okay, so our next question says, the line passing through the points minus three, seven, and one n has a gradient of negative a half. Work out the value of n. So this question is a little bit different. We've been given the gradient, so we know this value, and we've been asked to find the value n. So let's label our coordinates, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So m equals, well, that's minus a half equals y2, that's n, subtract y1, that's seven, over, x2, that's 1, subtract x1, that's negative 3. So let's simplify this a bit. So let's work out this. So we're going to get minus a half is equal to n subtract 7 over, well, 1 minus minus 3, that's 4. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 4 to get rid of the divide by 4 here. So minus a half times 4, that's going to be minus 2 is equal to n subtract 7. And then if we add 7 to both sides, we're going to get n. So that's going to be n equals 5. So that means that n is equal to 5. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. Our last question says a straight line passes through the points w minus 28, minus 1, minus 10, and 6, 32. And we've been asked to find w. So we've got a straight line passing through three points. So what I'm going to do is first of all focus on these two points here. And then that will tell me the gradient of the line. Then once I know the gradient of the line, I can look at this point and another one, and then we can work out the w. So first of all, let's label these points x1, y1, and x2, y2. And let's work out the gradient of the line joining these two points. So we've got m equals y2, that's 32, subtract y1, that's minus 10. And then on the denominator, we've got x2, that's 6, minus, minus 1. So we'll give us 42 over 7. And then because 32 minus minus 10 would be 42, and 6 subtract minus 1 would be 7. And 42 divided by 7 would be 6. So the gradient of this line would be 6. So we've got the gradient of the line is equal to 6, so we can use that information along with the points we've been given to work out the w. So I'm just going to wrap out the labelling that we used for the first part of the question, and I'm going to add in, well let's call this one, x1, y1. And I'm actually going to use this point here as x2, y2. Now I've done that on purpose, the reason I've done that on purpose is whenever I substitute these values in to our equation, our y2 minus y1, it gives me positive numbers at the front, which is quite handy. So let's substitute this information in and the fact that the gradient is equal to 6. So 6 equals y2, well that's going to be equal to 32, subtract y1, so that's going to be minus minus 28, and that's over x2, that's 6, subtract w. Let's simplify the numerator here, so that's going to be 6 is equal to, well, 32 minus minus 28, that's going to be 60, over 6 minus w. Now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 6 minus w, so that will give us 6 bracket 6 minus w is equal to 60, and multiply the brackets will be 36 minus 6w is equal to 60. So I'm going to add 6w to both sides, that's going to be 36 is equal to 60 plus 6w, and subtract 60 from both sides will give us minus 24 is equal to 6w. And finally, dividing both sides of the equation by 6 will give us w is equal to minus 4. And that's it. So the gradient of the line, obviously at GCSE level you may have used gradients equal to rise divided by run. Um, it can also be useful to use this formula that the gradient is equal to m, and that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1.